Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the second part of Music Network's talks. Um, and this is my part, which is music in the digital environment, uh, part two. Hello. Uh, technology. Music in the visual environment, eh? Let's try that again. Okay, we're on. So welcome back. I hope you had a nice lunch. Um, and indeed, probably several lunches and several dinners and several sleeps since part one. This is part two. Uh, and we're going to be talking about sharing music. Um, for those who didn't catch the talk on Tuesday, uh, we were speaking then, by we I mean I, um, about making music. Um, so I want to start this second part by talking uh, a little bit about the literary critic Harold Bloom, uh, partly because he has perhaps one of the great faces, um, but more importantly because he was one of the great literary critics of the 20th century. Um, and Bloom had a very interesting theory that looked at the anatomy of influence. Um, and here we see his book, Literature as a Way of Life. Um, and the quote that I want to focus in on is from his book, Kabbalah and Criticism, where he says, I do not believe that meaning is produced in and by poems but only between poems. And what he means by that is that it's only, the only reading of a poem is another poem. And that in order to understand something and transmit something, we have to create something in response. And in fact, the meaning of poetry is in that chain or that link um, between poems. And he talks about a strong reading of a poem being a poem which transmutes or transforms the original um, into a completely new thing. And he talks about that as being a misprision um, or a concealing of, of, a, of a crime. Um, and I, I talk about that because I think Bloom here is really touching uh, on something which is very important that it's in those kind of contact points between works that meaning is created uh, and certainly gives me meaning to the life of the artist. Um, so obviously we're gonna look at that in the context of music, but before we come to music um, and we'll be giving a kind of survey, by we again, I mean I, um, of uh, works that are happening right now and, and what the current responses are in the digital environment. Um, but I think a, a really important piece that for me kind of typifies um, or exemplifies how these kinds of um, connections are formed and shown in a work comes from contemporary dance. Um, and I'm going to show you an excerpt from a piece by a choreographer and filmmaker and comedian and very funny guy uh, called Mitchell Rose. <laughs> I'm Mitchell Rose. He's Mitchell Rose. Um, and in 2016, uh, he created a piece which I think has been uh, increasingly inspiring in the current situation. Um, and that is called Exquisite Corpse. <laughs> Thank you. 
created at the current time, but I think it's somehow come to really um, give a shining example of how in isolation we can speak to each other uh, and connect in very direct ways. And obviously dance in many ways is the most direct of, of all the art forms um, in terms of the physical body. Um, but what this piece shows for me is the, the line, you know, the through line that connects one artist to the other and, and shows that willingness to receive the move uh, from the previous choreographer and offer it uh, to the next. And in that taking of the move and offering it to the next, giving a meaning um, and, and effectively creating uh, a linked chain of meanings in the form of dances uh, or in the form of poems. And so the question now is how in this socially uh, distanced environment where we are very much uh, distant from other people and in our own personal spaces, uh, how can music continue to serve as the social function um, that we looked at in the first part, uh, looking again at another one of Peter Bruegel's paintings. Um, and here again, you see the musicians embedded in the scene amidst eating and drinking and dancing and being a part of, of being alive. Um, so I'm going to talk about some projects um, that for me show that uh, in the current time and kind of offer um, to us these examples of that through music. Um, obviously, there's hundreds and thousands of things happening all over the world right now. Um, it's very difficult to give a kind of an, an overview of a, or a survey of them in uh, such a short time. So I'm going to talk primarily about things that I've personally been involved in because um, I have a little bit more of an insight into those. Um, and the first thing I'd like to talk about is, is that in music anyway, even in, at other times, um, I've realized um, from thinking about this talk actually that music is always dedicated to somebody else. Uh, every kind of major piece that I've written um, was always dedicated to somebody. Um, you know, you always uh, hear, you know, in a trad session, the musicians would tell who they received the piece for. Um, whenever friends of mine have got married, I've written them pieces that have played at the wedding or given them a, a performance or, or a piece. And so actually, you know, that kind of offering of, of music is, is something that anyway is a direct connection between people. This, my second quintet, um, Wrote last year was dedicated to my grandfather, late grandfather. Um, the forest piece I was talking about a little bit in the first part was dedicated to the trees uh, of the house that I grew up in and uh, actually features the planting of a tree uh, by the viola soloist, who is the wild apple. Um, and so, you know, the question is how do we continue this gifting, this offering, this sharing of work? Uh, at a time where we're live streaming uh, or offering recordings of our work uh, in socially isolated environments or socially distanced environments, I should say. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the improvised music company in Triscoll Art Center's piece by piece series, because I think actually it's proving to be a really great demonstration of, of this idea. Um, so this is a, a weekly series uh, that we're into the fourth week now solo performances by Irish improvisers. And each one of those is pre-recorded uh, in response to the previous work. So the series started with Shane Latimer uh, in the first week, um, and then Olesa Zdorovetska and I uh, performed the second part. Uh, Sean McElane performed the third part. Um, and we're gonna hear from Cormac McCarthy tomorrow. And you know, obviously this was happening in a very short time, so you have to make a, make a work very quickly uh, and obviously record it and perform it and compose it and film it. Um, and we talked a little bit about how musicians, especially now are having to become sound engineers and filmmakers and so on. Um, but our experience of this when we saw Shane's piece was 
um, quite strong because Shane didn't record just him playing, uh, you know, in his bedroom as we kind of been expecting was going to be the format, but actually made a film piece uh, and, and a video piece. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of that here. <laughs> wondering how he got those video effects he actually did them in reaper so that's another thumbs up for reaper uh, so when we saw that firstly we realized okay it's not just going to be a performance in response to this it's going to actually be um a video piece and, and part of shane's performance also uh included him going outside of the house and, and taking uh, pictures on his kind of daily walk um, and he lives very close to us and happened to go down the same road um, so we also went outside and took some footage and we got interested in words that kind of jumped out of the environment and made little kind of tone poems. And Alessa also got kind of inspired by his bowing of the guitar and, and did a bowed piece in response to that. <laughs> first steps in music theory are remembering the future. You never know where it could end up. Utopia is a golden time to start. by Sean McElhen in a very kind of Kabbalistic uh, trinity. Um, he ties all three together in his opening gesture, actually. performances online and you know for me obviously we're all watching them uh, when they come out because one of the great things about pre-recording gigs that you can watch your own gig with your friends uh, which has been a, a bit of a revelation from this whole period um but there really is a sense that okay you're sitting at home and you haven't seen anybody for weeks but you're really sharing something and there's a communication here and it's it's that communication it's that passing over of a gesture um that is creating the meaning um, I, I liked this um, comment by uh, Robbie Blake from Tonto that uh, invites me to come. He's created a Chinese whispers-esque concert series, um, which I just think is a, is a very beautiful thing in itself. And you know, we, we spoke a little bit in the first part about the, the necessity of recording technology and how the, uh, the recording itself will, will shape, um, obviously, the way that people are receiving it. Um, you know, and how there's this kind of a, a balance or dichotomy between the material itself and the, the method of transmission. Um, 
you know, and, and for me, that kind of throws up something uh, somewhat akin to the, the wave particle duality um, of electrons. Um, and, and it's kind of a, a total coincidence that I only realized about half an hour ago that actually today in 1897 was the day that the electron was discovered um, by J.J. Thompson, um, who discovered or, or surmised that the uh, electron was a particle um, using the cathode ray experiment. And uh, Thompson received the Nobel Prize for this in 1906. Um, but strangely, his son um, received a Nobel Prize in 1936, I think, or 37, for proving that the electron was also a wave. Um, and now in quantum mechanics, we talk about the wave particle duality, that electrons are both. And actually, the way that we test for them will determine the, the form which they take. Um, so in many ways, the, the recording or transmission of music is like this, that you can think about the, the method of transmission as being a kind of a, a wave-like um, form that music takes, but the idea itself is a particle. Um, and so both of those things are happening in real time. It depends on the way you think about it. And I, I think uh, Fionn's, I think it was question in the first part about what about old recordings um, where the you know, the recording quality is terrible, but we still listen to them and love them, um, is because although the wave itself might, might have been weak, the, the idea was, was brilliant, you know, a, a very highly charged particle. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a survey of other things happening around the world. Today is also International Jazz Day, um, and it's no coincidence that this was also the day the electron was discovered on International Jazz Day. Um, and uh, I think actually this is a good example of what the New Orleans Jazz Museum is doing. Um, you can see in their program, the bottom right here, there is uh, some talks, there are some archival performances, there's some live streaming things from home, um, there's a DJ set, you know, people are mixing media um, and using platforms to show and highlight pre-recorded content that they'd like to share and to mix that with live content. Um, so to spend a minute just talking about how we're actually doing this. Um, so a lot of people are going straight to the world just via their phone using uh, Instagram Live or Facebook Live. Um, there are several other platforms which are popular. Um, all of these um, were primarily designed actually for people to share games, to live stream, stream games uh, with their friends. Um, I think Twitch is probably proving the most popular. Um, for musicians, there's a lot of DJs um, and performers using Twitch to share it. Um, these will require some kind of uh, a, a third party streaming service of which Streamable uh, seems to be the most popular. Um, and actually, this gives you a huge amount of control over the way it's uh, you're streaming. You can use multiple camera setups. Um, obviously, you can use your audio interfaces. Um, you can go in through a mixer. Um, there's, a lot of ways, uh, video effects and so on. So there's a, a huge capacity for creativity in the way that content is being created uh, and streamed. Uh, another great example by Music ne Network themselves uh, is the Butterfly Sessions. And, uh, these are commissions of new works, new five minute works um, by I think 24 performers from across Ireland. And, uh, what I really love about this, and, and it's proven to be the, the same about a lot of um, online performances, is the insight into musicians' homes um, and houses. And you know, in in Pado Aria, there's um, jig. He, one of the things I noticed straight away was just how loud the birds were um, in in his piece, um, or just outside his piece. You know, so this kind of moment of, of separation is actually giving us a, a tremendous opportunity for insight uh, into the personalities and the lives and, and the daily realities um, of a lot of the musicians that we, that we know, love and, and revere. Um, obviously, I'm sure all of you have uh, come across the Island Performs series, which is a, a huge amount uh, of content uh, coming from musicians direct. Um, 
one of the ones we spoke about on Tuesday was uh, Cormac Begley's uh, performance from the caravan in, in Dingle, um, which was really stunning, I have to say, and for, for many reasons, partly because Cormac's an exceptional musician um, and knows maybe the most about the concertina that anybody knows in the world, um, but also a combination of things. You know, and you really felt here that the particle and the wave uh, had very much kind of fused together to, to form a, a singularity, um, you know, as the sun set. And uh, I, I think this stream has had maybe 50,000 views here. Um, and I, I think that's kind of a, a testament to, to the, the way that things aligned uh, in this piece. A um, couple of nights ago, I uh, got to watch uh, Sirka Richardson and, and Quevin O'Reilly uh, in the other voices Courage series, um, which is a, a slightly different venture because it's being uh, recorded in a venue in Wheelands, in an empty Wheelands. Um, and obviously, in, in terms of the, the wave mechanism here, there's uh, a full audio crew and, and a camera team. So it's, it's very um, HD. Um, and this is an amazing concert. And I, I think it's still online. You should definitely watch it now. Or I'm sure it'll be on TV at some point. I, I thought Quibian's comment was very funny where, you know, it's the moment in the gig where, where you go, oh, it's great to be here, but he just said, it's great just to get out of the house. <laughs> you know? And uh, I think a lot of us were, were feeling that. Uh, so a, a lot of the big venues around the world, um, including the Metropolitan Opera, are offering uh, streams of their HD content, uh, which is an amazing opportunity to kind of get into the archives um, you know, and, and there's hundreds and hundreds complete performances in the past 14 years uh, of cinema transmissions uh, and here again you know the wave is very strong um, and, of, and of course the particle but you know, these are filmed for TV uh, and suddenly you've got uh, access to all that content. Um, another another event that I, that I saw a couple of days ago um, which was quite nice uh, was um, a DJ performance or Earth Night, um, with a hundred DJs going back to back uh, and playing one song each from around the world, um, which again is is just quite touching, and it's kind of both uh, both touching and and kind of funny to see uh, DJs with the kind of the full decks and the rig and, and lighting, but with you know their ironing board behind them, um, you know, and so I think this is really kind of piercing the veil, you might say, um, and somewhat bursting the mystique uh, of arts and telling people that artists and musicians are, are real people. Um, another piece um, that was sent to me a couple of days ago by a composer friend of mine in Ankara, Anwar Turkman, um, who's actually written a series of pieces for his friends to be shared on social media. And I wonder whether this is perhaps the first time that's been written on a score, um, so I'll be recording that and posting that up soon. Uh, my brother, uh, Alex Ross, just today on International Jazz Day, has launched the video premiere uh, of a piece he made with 22 musicians from seven different countries. I think it might have ended up being more than that in the end, including at least four or five musicians from Ireland uh, under the name Multi Traction Orchestra. And this was a really interesting idea as well. He created a kind of a, a hold track um, and then each individual musician recorded themselves playing along with that and filmed themselves um, and then uploaded that to YouTube and he edited and mixed everything together. And uh, that track comes out tomorrow on, on Bandcamp um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm gonna just give you a little bit of that. I think this is really beautiful. Thank you. 
into the complete performance. I think Jazzwise shared it today. Um, again, I, I think this is a, a really remarkable way of people who might have recorded it in isolation, but now can watch it and see all of the people uh, that have contributed and feel a part of something. Um, so just a, a couple of other kind of technical uh, things that have uh, come to mind. One of the things we talked about was, was uh, Reaper um, and possibilities of actual real-time audio interfacing. So I just want to play a little bit of uh, the very first ever internet broadcast in 1994 by the Future of London. This is called a CD, um, and uh, so obviously internet broadcast has been around for a while. Um, one of the things that's proven popular again um, is the idea of network jamming, and I really think, you know, in response to Holly's question, it, it, it's only a very short time before we really have HD streaming. But um, before we get to that, we do have um, Ninjam, which is a, made by Cocos uh, for Reaper. Uh, as a plugin, which does allow people to to jam or improvise together, uh, although there is a kind of a, a loop that you're playing inside, so it's not exactly in real time, um, but it's worth exploring if you're looking for ways to play with other people. Uh, this is the Network Music Festival that, that I spoke about in the, the previous part that um, ran for a few years and, and is now suddenly um, is undergoing a, a resurge uh, of interest. So I just a, a note about uh, methods of, of teaching. I know a lot of musicians are doing online teaching at the moment. Um, and uh, Zoom is proving to be catastrophically bad for that because obviously it's optimized for, for speech. So it has a tendency to, to drop levels or drop gain levels when uh, it detects a strong signal on, on the other person's mic, which is terrible for music. Um, I, I think of the platforms, actually Jitsi is the best and also has the best kind of security issues that there are problems with Zoom um, in terms of malware and tracking. Um, so we spoke briefly about Tona Quinn's article for the Journal of Music um, and how this was going to transform the music industry. One thing that I wondered about was, will this perhaps uh, create another resurgence of interest in 360 audiovisual recordings. Um, and here's an example of that. This is a piece by composer End Debates. Uh, and this is on the internet as well. You'll see it's uh, 360 audio, so you can move the screen position, which will change the audio that you're hearing in real time. Uh, this is a piece of saxophone quintet. Online, it's Trinity, broken, unbroken. And obviously, we will see. I think if if there are um, venues changing the way they're programming things, that this might be a, a way that they go. Um, I'll I'll leave this uh, mainly for Steve, who's going to take over in the next talk to talk about how um, music is being shared online. Um, there's been a huge growth of the streaming industry um, in recent years. And that has its problems here. You can see that it takes 3,114 streams on Spotify to earn one hour of minimum wage in the UK, um, which I think has focused musicians a lot on other platforms such as Bandcamp. Uh, tomorrow, Bandcamp will be foreshowing, foregoing its share of, of all revenue uh, and giving everything direct to the artists. and there's a very good thread here by Future Music Coalition, who are also excellent advocates for musicians' rights, um, on why Bandcamp are able to do this, um, because they are not designed for mass markets, but are more niche-oriented. Uh, and a lot of labels, including Diatribe, will be giving their revenue share over to the artist directly tomorrow as well. Um, so that is the conclusion of that very quick half an hour talk, that one really, really flew by. So uh, it just remains for me to say thank you to Music Network for the opportunity to speak about these things. 
Uh, I hope it's sparked some, some interesting ideas for people. Um, and you can watch these back. Uh, I the whole thing will be posted up soon. And I'd recommend listening to all of the other talks as well. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing this. And you will see my big face. There is my big face. Uh, and we've time for a few questions. Um, what is what is what, da, 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 what is one piece of equipment worth investing in for anyone who might want to stay sharing their music online? Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure I can say that there's one piece of equipment because there's a chain. Um, so you know, as we spoke about previously, your your primary uh, interface is the the microphone. Um, so it's certainly worth investing uh, in a good microphone, um, but obviously good microphones are, are quite usage specific. Um, it depends what instrument you're using. I, I personally have uh, a set of BPA 4060s, which are these tiny little mics uh, that have a really wide frequency response, um, right down from 20 hertz up to uh, 20k. Uh, and they're pretty good all-rounder mics. You can use them to record uh, any kind of single source, and they're omni. Um, uh, and they're they're a pretty good option. Um, depends how much uh, you have to invest in it. Obviously, getting a sound card as well uh, to power the mics. Um, so I, I'd say those would be the the first two pieces of equipment that you'll probably need right now: a microphone and an interface. Um, and the main thing really is to invest in the time. Uh, to get to know how to use them, um, and it does take a lot of trial and experimentation, and you know, looking up tutorials and seeing what's going on. Um, Mirren, what are the best apps for ensemble performance? Yeah, so I, I think the the bottom line, and we kind of touched on this on Tuesday as well, is that there really isn't um, an app out there that will enable people to play music live in real time. Um, it doesn't exist. Um, I, I think what we have to do until um, that software arrives, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it will arrive, um, are to find ways of working with the kind of the, the imperfect technologies that we do have. Um, Jam, Jam Kazam um, is, is one software that kind of offers to do this. Nin, Nin Jam as well, uh, that I spoke about as the cookbook thing. Have kind of ways of doing it, but but you know they have their limitations. You have to play within a certain time loop, um, and I, I think one of the most um, kind of rewarding mechanisms that I've I've had doing this is actually just making pre-recorded parts that other people pre-record along to. Um, and I think until the the software exists for us to be able to do that in real time, we're we're better off using uh, kind of you know going the circuitous routes um, to getting the, the best ways of doing it. And to, also, I, I guess I should say that you know, I'm not really super desperate for that software to arrive because it does mean that there's still a necessity for musicians to be together in a room uh, in real life, um, which is obviously important. And uh, a, a good comment from Jud Greenstein uh, from New Amsterdam Records the other day was like, Who's actually saying that this is the future of performance? Where are these people? You know, are they? Is anyone actually really, really saying that? And you know, the answer is no. I mean, any musician will say, "Look, these are ways of getting around this." But the bottom line is, the best way is to be in a room, um, and that's, I think, the same for for teaching. Uh, although a lot of a lot of musicians have said that in some ways, especially with children who are used to uh, looking at screens, they're finding that they're actually some of their students are really excelling uh, at the moment. So it might be that we will have a kind of a hybrid form uh, when we come out of this uh, on the other side. Um, Kenneth, can we the multi-traction or orchestra was great fun to be part of? Yeah, loving your, your recording work there, Ken. Uh, Holly, what do you think are the best platforms for reaching audiences? Um, I think Really, the best way of doing it is to spread the net far and wide. Um, go go across as many platforms as you can. Um, a good thing about using something like Twitch um, is that it enables you to embed your stream on all of the different platforms. So uh, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook or, or Twitter, um, you can stream 
uh, and embed your your Twitch stream to that, um, which I think is benef which has a benefit rather than just streaming on Instagram or just streaming on on Facebook, uh, just doing a YouTube live thing. Um, it's it's better to actually use a kind of a a mother platform that you can then stream to to others from. Um, any tutorials you'd recommend to learn basic recording? Um, yeah, I mean, so as I say, I, I highly recommend getting into Reaper. Um, and there is there are a variety of, of really good uh, tutorials on that. Um, there's one that Shane Latimer told me about recently, um, which is really excellent. Uh, the name isn't coming to you off the top of my head, but I'll I'll come back and I'll actually post uh, a link to that. There's there's one particular website that's really excellent where I learned about the, how you can do video processing. And if Shane Latimer um, is watching this, he could maybe post that up um, because he told me about that. Stone Pharisee, I'm told the lags in 5G tech will be short enough to support live ensemble playing, but that may be geographically restricted. It's a few years away. Yeah, um, I'm I'm pretty sure as the technology gets faster, We'll see new platforms that evolve to take advantage of those as faster speeds, uh, as long as people don't keep blowing up the towers, obviously. Uh, Carl Corcoran, hey Carl, are you familiar with Jack Audio? Yeah, I, I have looked into this. Um, I, I think Jack um, is pretty specialized. Um, it's not really a plug and play, you know, as, as the name might suggest piece of software you do really need to know how to go under the bonnet um, in, in terms of writing code um, for the most part and it's tricky to set up I, I haven't actually managed to get it working um, and the few people that I know who have managed to get it working um, have have said it's it's not it's not easy you, you really need to know what you're doing um, and to be somewhat specialized in this but I'm pretty sure that you know those people who are, do have that degree of speciality will be working on software at the moment that will enable us um, to do it uh, for us mere mortals um, more easily in the future. Um, Mirren, I personally think if students are excelling, it's because they have more time to practice rather than it being due to screen teaching. Yeah, um, quite, quite possibly. I mean, as we said in the first part, uh, the most important thing you can do um, at the moment is is to practice. Um, that's the that's the primary reason. Um, and I'd like to think you're right. Uh, it's just a comment that somebody last night said that they found actually there was a, a kind of a directness of connection between them and the student um, that they found they weren't able to get uh, in the room. But I hope you're right, and and they were wrong. Um, do we have any other questions? Um, Fionn says Musi.live is great for teaching. It's dedicated and tailored to teaching music. Worth checking? Okay, I, I don't know that one. I will check it out. Um, okay, I think that's that's all of the questions. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so thank you for listening. Um, I hope you've had some some take homes, and I hope you'll you'll join me uh, in watching Steve, uh, Francis, and Leisha's talks coming up. Uh, which I'm sure will be super interesting. So thanks very much. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Uh, and see you again. Take care.